Moon mutants, that's what we're on about nowadays, everybody. And they have come in the form of a big bad bear, a dying deer, a dangerous dog, and a frightful frog. But with our initial experiments out of the way, I got to thinking about just how not afraid we should be of these guys. Apart from that Varg, that is. That thing is terrifying. But as a quick refresher before we get into all of it, how do we actually get to any of it? Well, we either progress all the way through the end of the Celestial Champion questline that sees us making one last choice with an enlightened shard and wax staff or we just turn on the damn rifts from the get-go with no fuss route one gives us the time to prepare of course and rifts will generate five days following that exchange you just saw while these settings spawn a tear in space and time by day two so you do you as either way is gonna lead to the same chaos mutated mobs with a lunar rift active any deer clops killed has an opportunity to be infected which will turn her into a crystal deer clops it will boast 2,000 more health than its original counterpart, will technically deal 30 more damage per hit as well, although playing our defense on our part will negate some of that, offers new attacks and challenges, but also fresh behaviors as well. And that is actually mostly what this video is for, as while the bosses are neat, they're actually kinda easy, so seeing how this crystal deer class will still roam, but not actually care about structures anymore, intrigues me more than the fight itself. But yes, this is a guide on these bosses, so here's the gist. That cold aura around the thing ain't friendly to most, and these ice spikes are devastating, so keep moving and be ready to fight ice with fire. And I do mean literally, as while the other bosses will will have alternatives, Crystal Deerclops is all about waiting for their two ranged moves, blasting them with the fire attack as soon as possible, getting up to 15 or 16 attacks in ourselves, and repeating that until it's dead so. And yes, it really is that simple, folks. You see? Easy. But how about that Zobber Berger, everybody? As I'll be honest, this is the guy that's given me the headaches. Not because he's super difficult or anything, he's just kind of finicky. And when an 8,000 health, 117.5 damage per swipe beast doesn't always play by the rules they're supposed to, things get ugly fast. Seriously. One wrong move or position places you into a fury of blows that you are not going to get out of most of the time as his kiting pattern has changed completely. Now you can do the same bait and hit mechanics that we've always learned, but it has to be slow. Like, really slow. Patience will be required, as you will need to see his full swing finish before getting in but two swings yourself before it's too late. So it's doable, just not ideal. What is, however, is also that very finicky thing I mentioned. His butt stomp. If he thinks we are behind him, he will attempt it, and this is our in. Here is where we stun him. But before the fight plays out, let us highlight the fun bits as I want to. Like how this Berger will still disarm, but he won't yawn. And that's because he's always aggressive no matter the season now, and he doesn't care about eating. Again, it's some small tweaks, but I like them. And I do like this fight too, as it does keep you on your toes, so give it a watch and make your notes. And no, no, no hit today, folks, but that was close enough. But you know what you shouldn't be close to when it mutates? The Varg, as these possessed suckers are no joke. 3,000 health, a potential 80 damage per bite, an ice breath attack that hits multiple times for 20 plus damage on top of the planar nonsense, and an almost never-ending horde of hounds as they will return as horror hounds each and every time. It's not fun. But Clay has actually hotfixed them already, so the Hound should be on the lesser side moving forward, which does ease up a bit. Still, my advice is the same. 
If you want or need to kill one, then leave the course be and come back with friends, be them real or otherwise. Trust me, just like with regular Vargs, this instantly lessens the difficulty and it might actually become laughable. But what do you mean by needing to kill these guys, Beard? Is there actually a point? Yes, but it's a Wagstaff point, so who knows if we've actually made the right choice in doing so, you know? But after every mutant death, he will show up spouting his usual nonsense about how we're helping him accomplish something, and once the three are down for the count, he will finally reveal for us a single spark arc for our pleasure. And yes, only one, but this could very well change after today. Regardless of that potential though, we still need to charge the things, so head down to an ancient archive that's activated in order to trap a security orb, and then and only then can we even consider one of the three new Brightsmithy crafts. But let's be real, only one truly deserves our immediate attention each and every time, the Howitzer. It is an infinitely refuelable blow dart powered by Hound's Teeth that offers us insane range, 68 damage per shot, and massive planar damage on top of that, as it does most of that 68 damage as planar at the end of the day. To continue though, a recent hotfix has turned the Ice Crystallizer into a kit, but beyond that, we can expect the exact same mechanics as before, with an eye socketed, creating a massive area of effect of cold weather essentially, that will prevent withering, wildfires, and more, but it can also be used to apply freezing to mobs when nearby, although you yourself will be included in that mind. Also note that I've also heard that it slows down the spoiler simers of foods, however in all my testing, I can say that is not true, or it might just be broken, but to truly wrap up this segment comes the Polar Berger Bin, and I'll keep it simple. It is a massively efficient and portable icebox that only accepts full crockpot dishes. Have fun. Before we go though, a few last notes. Yes, boss variants can be mutated too, but they will all eventually look and work the same anyway, so it doesn't matter. Yes, burning any of the corpses stops a mutation, but it also means you'll have to potentially wait another year for another mutation itself, so maybe think twice. Yes, non-planar stuff can still work here, but it won't be pretty, and you won't be able to stun the Berger or Varg at the end of the day. And finally, yes, the bright-eyed frogs are related to frog rain specifically, with a 60% chance to spawn from the sky, 150 health, an additional 5 planar damage, the ability to steal 3 items at once, increased hopping distance to catch up to you quick, and even a bit of a slowdown if and when they do hit us. Good luck, but just treat them as regular frog rain, really. And there you have everyone, a bit of a deeper dive in the Don't Starve Together's newest trio of death and then some, the Moon Mutants, and I suspect these are just the beginning, but I also suspect things to change, so keep an eye out. But I've kept you here long enough, so get to fighting the infections now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.